Miss K's second son, Jace, decided he would test his duck call at five o'clock in the morning. His mother is in there in bed, so he cranks down on that duck call to see if he got it tuned right. Well, it wakes her up back there. When we came back from the hunt, we saw this piece of paper and it says, whoever blew that duck call at five o'clock in the morning is in trouble. Don't ever do that again. The cook. The reason she signed it, the cook, she was tying together, blow the duck call, wake me up. Dinner won't be ready for you when you come back. Get off the duck call or the meals are fixed to dry up. That's what she was saying in a nice way. She's a kind woman. So I was thinking, when I told her, I saw that note, I said, you know who that was, don't you? Who was that that did that? What fool would come in here and do that? I said, one of your sons. Which one was it? I said, Jason. She said, you know, we always argued the most when he was younger. <laughs> hey. Jace never pulled out again, by the way. You go back through there, you run into a little lair, we call it. Air conditioned, color TV. Now, so down in the end, when you walk out of all where all our stuff is, you come back in here. We get a little air conditioning back in here for summertime, heat. You say, so why have what we call the lair? The lair. A lair is a place you come to, protection, rest. So, in deference to the women, we say, you know, these women put up with a lot. We all come tearing up in there at five o'clock in the morning, let's get them. You know, they're back there trying to sleep. Somebody cranks down on a duck call, you know, to check their call, you know. <laughs> loud, you know, five o'clock in the morning, you got the woman back in there, you know, she's thinking, ooh. So, because of my love for my little woman, little Miss Stubby, Miss K, her gentle and quiet spirit, I said, you know what? I said, I'm gonna go over there, fix me a little place where all the guys come in here before daylight, five in the morning. You know, they do whatever they want to do, <laughs> chewing tobacco, making hot coffee, you know, blowing their duck call here, Every man for himself, you're free to do what you want to do. The women love it. When they saw me load it all up and come here, they were like, Whew. So that was the that was the reason we ended up here. Good move. All my kids built bigger houses. I just built a place where we could all come to and men be men. Pretty cool. <laughs> Primarily, this is used for a few hunters that visit us from time to time, a place they can sleep. Uh, also, now, the guys is coming out of these rehabs, and once rehabilitated, which really does you no good to be rehabilitated if you're not redeemed, see? Redemption, God does that. That's where we point them. They say, okay, you've been rehabilitated. You're off opioids. Uh, were you getting high and uh, getting drunk and getting laid? Is that kind of the way it went? Not necessarily that order, but those were the kind of the three that kind of fed the fuel, right? Uh, yeah. I said, well, you can quit getting drunk. That's good but it's a sin, it has to be paid for. So we give them the redemption that God provides. You can start over again, it's called being born again. So God not only will rehabilitate you, he'll redeem you and you get immortality and peace of mind while you're on the earth. Those people come here, we send them here. We hand pick them and we stay with them 
We give them Bible instruction, food, money. You say, anybody paying you to do this, Phil? No, no one's paying me to do this. I'm just helping out my fellow man, trying to get them to where they're productive citizens. Say what you want to, the rehabs are full, the mental wards are full, and the prisons are full. We're here to help. So we help the rehabbers, they stay here, and people who visit hunts. They got, they got grub, running water, a stove, they can cook, a restroom. This is a place that I can also come to. Some say, well, it's like a man cave. Well, the cave part, if you want to call it that, is where we stick these camera guys. We stick them back in the cave. I mean, they're weird anyway. Where are you from, Los Angeles? Yeah, you stay back over here in the cave. So you put them back in the back. You have the key to the door. Put them back in there, you know, they're working with their wires, you know. They're on the computers. You're like, that's where they need to be. So the cave part is where we stick the camera guys. The man part, the men stay out here, see. They rest and relax, getting ready for tomorrow's hunt. 